Greetings, everyone. My name is Dr. Deborah, and I'm here to discuss a variety of biblical topics. Today, I'm going to discuss what the Holy Bible says about Darius the Mede, uh, which is correctly pronounced Madai. The Medes, or Madai, are mentioned in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. The Madai are a tribe of white people who are labeled as Gentiles in the Holy Bible and also are referred to as heathens in the Old Testament. King Darius the Madai was the most prominent white man in the Old Testament. Next week, a brief summary of all the Old Testament white men we haven't discussed yet will be made known. Specifically, here we're looking at Genesis 10, 1 through 5. And that would be Japheth, Gomer, Magog, Tubal, and Meshesh. And as I've said before, Gomer is Germany. Ashkenaz, he's the forefather of the Ashkenazi Jews. We touched a little bit on Togarma. So, as you see, all of these people are Gentiles, according to the Word of God. So, specifically, those guys will be discussed in next week's videos. Then I plan to complete a video titled, Why Racism is the Catholic Church's Attempt to Prove God Wrong. After that, I plan to begin a new series titled, why white people who are not Christians are the heathens of the New Testament. After I have finished studying and sharing information about all white people who are the Gentile tribes in the Holy Bible, I do plan to start another series called King David and the Brothers, which shall focus on the relationships that King David had with the black Hamitic men who lived among the Jews or surrounded the land of Israel. If you would like immediate responses to your questions or concerns, please post them this evening during the Facebook Live presentation. I intend to respond immediately after today's Facebook Live presentation has ended and after I have posted it on my YouTube channel titled The Gospel of the Kingdom, period. I appreciate your gracious interest and I thank you for your kind support. King Darius is the most prominent white man in the Old Testament because he is the first Gentile to rule over civilized people. Prior to King Darius the Mede, all the civilized kings in the Old Testament were black Hamitic men such as the Pharaohs or Nebuchadnezzar or they were Shemites such as King David. King Darius is the first white man to rule over civilized people. The word civilized means to live in cities. And since according to Genesis 10, black Hamitic people were the first civilized people, while white Gentiles were the last tribe to be civilized, thus for a white Gentile to rule over civilized people was a great accomplishment for white people. This profound accomplishment would not take place again outside Babylon until till the rise of Alexander the Great during the 400 year time period between the Old and New Testaments. When we examine the word Darius, we find that word Darius is not a name. Darius is a title, which means president or ruler. That's why we find multiple people named Darius in the scriptures. There's Darius the Mede, whom we're going to discuss today. There's Darius the Persian, and a variety of other Dariuses who are named in the books of Daniel, Haggai, and Zechariah. This video focuses only on the scriptures that apply to Darius the Mede, who is a white man, also known as a Gentile. We see the Gentile tribe identified in Genesis 10, 1 through 5. So here, this time, I'm going to read it. Now, these are the generations of the sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and unto them were sons born after the flood. 
the sons of Japheth. Japheth is the father of all white people. Gomer, again, that's Germany, and Magog, and Madai, that's the person that Darius the Mede is descended from, and Yavon, that's where the Greeks come from, and Tubal, and Meshesh, and Tiris. And the sons of Gomer, again, that's Germany, Ashkenaz, that's the person from whom the Ashkenazi Jews are descended, and Riphath and Togarma, and the sons of Yavon, Elisha and Tarshish and Ketim and Dodanim. And if you want more information on them, please look at videos part one and two about that are titled the sons of Greece because Yavon is the biblical name for Greece. By these were the isles of the Gentiles. So you can see by reading the scriptures that the definition you may have been taught that anyone who is not a Jew is a Gentile, that is a false definition. According to the Holy Bible, the Gentiles are the people descended from Japheth. Okay, so by these were the isles of the Gentiles divided in their lands, everyone after his tongue, after their families in their nations. Okay. Now, the title Darius is correctly pronounced in Hebrew as Dara Yavesh, which is 1867 in Strong's Concordance. If you say that quickly, Dara Yavesh, it does sort of sound like the title Darius. Please bear with me. Thank you. Black Hamitic men ruled the world beginning with the 10th chapter of Genesis until the moment the Belshazzar, the Black Hamitic son of the Black Hamitic Assyrian, Nebuchadnezzar, saw the handwriting on the wall. Although it is very difficult for white people, also known as Gentiles, to admit that black Hamitic men ruled the world for thousands of years during the Old Testament, that's exactly what the Holy Bible records. It's up to you to decide whom to believe, the words of the scriptures or the words of racist white people. We'll begin with the exact moment that world domination changes from black Hamitic people to the white Gentile Medes and the brown Shemitic Persians here in the fifth chapter of Daniel as powerful, disembodied, large, brown fingers begin to write divine graffiti on the wall of the black Hamitic king, Belshazzar. Here we go. Then was the part of the hand. So all he saw, all King Belshazzar saw, were fingers, part of the hand. Then was the part of the hand sent from him, and this writing was written. And this is the writing that was written. Belshazzar had a thousand lords present, and he was partying with the vessels from the temple that was destroyed in Jerusalem, and God didn't appreciate that. And this is the writing that was written. Many, many tikkun yufarsin. This is the interpretation of the thing. Many, God has numbered thy kingdom and finished it. So this is the end of black men ruling the world right here. Tiko, thou art weighed in the balances and found wanting. Paris, thy kingdom is divided and given to the Medes. The Medes were white people descended from Madai and the Persians. Okay, so seeing this writing had a big effect on Belshazzar. Then commanded Belshazzar, oops, after he. I'm sorry. After Daniel told them what the uh, words meant, then commanded Belshazzar, and they called Daniel, because uh, the um, king's uh, wife, the queen, uh, told them, call up Daniel if you want to understand 
what these words mean. And I'll explain in a minute how she knew to call up Daniel. And they clothed Daniel with scarlet and put a chain of gold about his neck and made a proclamation concerning him that he should be the third ruler in the kingdom. And that night was Belshazzar, the king of the Chaldeans. The Chaldeans were descended from the Assyrians. The Assyrians and the Chaldeans were black people. That was the end of black men ruling the world. And Darius, the Median, this white man, took the kingdom being about three score and two years old. So he was 62 years old when he became the king of um, what was then called Babylon. Okay, so as I said, these scriptures record the exact moment when white people began to rule the civilized world during the Old Testament. Yet before we discuss Darayavesh, the me, let's quickly review what Daniel the prophet has experienced in Babylon during the Jews' 70 year captivity up to this point. Now, Daniel had been through a lot. First of all, he was a eunuch. Okay, how do I know he was a eunuch? Well, the prophet Isaiah prophesies in uh, Isaiah 39 and 7 that the descendants of the king of Judah are going to be eunuchs in Babylon. So Daniel's existence prove that scripture and Daniel 9 and 10 indicate that Daniel was supervised by the person who supervised the eunuchs. So Daniel was extremely intelligent and they just took the intelligent Jewish captives as children. They were teenagers and uh, because he was so smart, he and a few other young men were selected or appointed to learn Chaldean culture. Now, being a eunuch means that his testicles were removed from his body probably when he was a child. Now, this is just a horrible thing uh, for anyone to do to a child. Unfortunately, um, Daniel was a brown-skinned Shemite, but another eunuch whom we all know I kind of don't like to say this because it, it was depressing the day I read it on Facebook, but I do believe it's true. George Washington Carver was also a eunuch. When he was a little boy, uh, he was a slave, and the man who bought him as a playmate went for his white daughter. So to make sure there was no molestation going on, he had little George Washington Carver castrated when he was a child. This is why, probably, George Washington Carver never married and that he is, uh, was on record as having an extremely high voice, even higher than a woman's voice, if you can imagine. Or l just listen to the recording that is somewhere on the internet of his speaking. Now, why? where did uh, castrating men to make them eunuchs come from? It came from black people because uh, the Egyptians learned that if you take a man and remove his testicles, that instead of growing up, getting married, or spending his life chasing after women, uh, if the eunuch is above average intelligence, he becomes a very devoted servant. So they wanted, they would castrate these men so they would be totally not interested in creating more children and because they couldn't really, but uh, because they would be extremely good servants. So that's what Daniel was. And unfortunately, the great George Washington Carver, but look what George Washington did for black people and white people, unfortunately. Uh, we don't, uh, we don't know you know, what would have happened if he hadn't been castrated. We're not, I'm not saying that we're glad that he was, because I'm not. It's really depressing to even learn such a thing, but I still appreciate the contributions that he made to world culture. 
Daniel also rejected the king's diet of wine and meat and chose vegetables instead. And thus he appeared healthier and fatter than the other uh, eunuchs. And not, not just Daniel, but also there are some other people, specifically Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego who were with him. After being threatened with death, Daniel told King Nebuchadnezzar the content and meaning of Nebuchadnezzar's dream. Remember, Nebuchadnezzar was a black man. And also, Daniel was thrown into the fiery, fiery furnace by that same King Nebuchadnezzar for refusing to worship his golden image. And now, Daniel is about to get thrown into the lion's den. Now, he was delivered. He, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were delivered from the fiery furnace. But now, he's about to get thrown into the lion's den. And who is about to throw the prophet Daniel into the lion's den? That same king, the Ryavesh, or Darius, the white Gentile king. Now, what did Darius look like? We don't know. We can only guess. Maybe he looked like this. Okay. This is what he looked like. And... That's our graphic representation, allegedly. Now, let's review the sixth chapter of the book of Daniel to see what happened. Okay. Now, it pleased Darius, the king, to set over the kingdom 120 princes, which should be over the whole kingdom. And over these three presidents, of whom Daniel was the first, that the princes might give accounts unto them, and the king should have no damage. Then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes, because an excellent spirit was in him, and the king thought to set him over the whole realm. Okay. Then these presidents and princes assembled together to the king and said thus unto him, King Darius, live forever. All the presidents of the kingdom, the governors and the princes, and the counselors and the captains, have consulted together to establish a royal statute and to make a firm decree that whosoever shall ask a petition of any god or man for 30 days save of thee o king shall be cast into the den of lions okay i think i skipped one but that's okay now what had happened before they presented that decree after daniel was appointed the haters got busy because this foreigner, this captive Jew eunuch, Daniel, was their head supervisor. So, as I just read, the prince, presidents and princes got together to find a fault in Daniel, but they couldn't find anything because Daniel was a faithful administrator. Therefore, one man said that the only way we can get something on Daniel if it's about the law of his God. So this is the scripture that I was supposed to read here. And as I mentioned, they got together without Daniel to make this decree that if anyone asked a petition of any man or God for 30 days, except of the king, he was going to be cast into the den of lions. Okay, so this is what they said to him. All right. Now, king, establish the decree and sign the writing that it be not changed according to the law of the Medes, and Darius was a Mede, and the Persians, which altereth not. Wherefore, King Darius signed the writing and the decree. Now, King Darayavesh, or Darius, may have been a great warrior or general, but he was not the sharpest knife in the drawer. He didn't question the need or purpose for this decree. He trusted those guys, and he just signed it. 
However, Daniel knew something was up because he was the head president, yet Daniel was not consulted or perhaps was ignored or absent by their design when this decree was presented to the king. After the king signed the decree, Daniel continued to pray out loud in his rooms with the windows open, the same windows that were in the direction of Jerusalem, the Jewish capital. He continued to pray out loud on his knees despite the decree three times a day. Thus, when the presidents and the princes heard Daniel praying, they went back to the king and reminded him of the decree he had just signed. They told him that Daniel is praying three times a day and he's not paying any attention to your decree, O king. Now the king Darayavashas or Darius credit, instead of getting mad at Daniel, he got mad at himself. He realized he had been played by his servants and he tried his best to figure out a way to save Daniel. Still, the presidents and princes came back to the king and reminded him that according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, no decree from the king could be changed. Okay, I'm just going to read the top scripture here. Then the king commanded, and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. Now the king spake, and said unto Daniel, thy, thy God, whom thou servest continually, he will deliver thee. So for him to say that, he was either speaking under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, or he believed in Daniel's God. Okay. All right. So, then they brought a stone and put it on the opening to the door so Daniel could not run out. Had the king signed the stone with his signet the way someone might seal a letter. Meanwhile, back in the lion's den, Daniel may have been looking at the situation like this. Okay, that's Daniel. And uh, in this picture, his hands are bound, but I could not see or find any scriptures that said Daniel's hands were bound in the lion's den. Now, when he went to the fiery furnace, uh, he and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were bound. But I don't see anything about him being bound, but it's still a nice picture. And this is Daniel looking at the lions, still praising God. Amen. Okay. So, meanwhile, King Darayavesh, or Darius, goes back to the palace. He spends the night fasting. So, he's thinking about God. He's saying, God, please, do, do something. Because... King Darius does not want Daniel to die, and the king can't sleep. He's upset. The king gets up early the next morning, and he runs to the den of lions. Okay. Now we'll read the bottom. And when he came to the den, he cried with a lamentable, that means sad, voice unto Daniel. And the king spake and said to Daniel, O oh, Daniel, servant of the living God, is thy God, whom thou servest continually, able to deliver thee from the lions? A logical question. Okay. So Daniel, who may now be looking like this, Right here, Daniel says to the king, O king, live forever. That's Daniel's way of saying, I ain't mad at you. 
Then Daniel says, My God has sent his angel. You see the angel behind him in the picture. And shut the lion's mouths that they have not hurt me because before God, innocency was found in me. And also before you, O king, I have done nothing wrong. All right. So the king was overjoyed and commanded that Daniel should immediately be taken out of the lion's den. Daniel experienced no injury. The king also commanded that the men who accused Daniel, the wives of those men and the children of those men, to be thrown all thrown into the lion's den because that's how the law of the Medes and the Persians was. Under Jewish law, children generally did not have to suffer for the sins of their fathers. The lions broke all of the accusers and their families' bones even before they made it to the bottom of the lion's den, where Daniel had patiently waited the previous evening. Those are all of the gory details I'm going to mention. Instead, I'd like to focus on the word continually. We see the king saying to Daniel in the first top scripture, thy king whom thou servest continually. And in the bottom scripture, he says again, thy God whom thou servest continually. Okay, if you're one of those people who would like to have the type of relationship with God that Daniel had, you must serve God continually like Daniel did. According to Webster's Unabridged Dictionary, continually means to do something all the time or to proceed without interruption. In the Old Testament, we see Job worship God continually in the first chapter of the book of Job. And here we see there was a man in the land of Uz. Okay, Uz was where um, uh, Abraham had come from, whose name was Job. Okay. And that man was perfect and upright and one that feared God and eschewed, that means put away or did not agree with evil. And his sons went, these are my scriptures, sorry. And his sons went and feasted in their houses every one his day and sent and called for their three sisters to eat and drink with them. And it was so when the days of their feasting were gone about that Job sent and sanctified them. And rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, It may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus did Job continually. Now Job was descended from Midian, who was one of the black sons of Abraham in Genesis 25, 1 and 2. If you would like more information on Job, who was Hamitic and Shemitic, please download my free book titled The Black Sons of Abraham from my website, drdebrabooks.com. Uh, there's my website. And uh, read pages 58 to 78. Now, was Joe black? Of course he was. And some of you already instinctively knew that. Like the prophet Daniel, Job continually worshipped the God of Israel. In the New Testament, we find in the Apostle Paul's first letter to the Thess Thessalonians, these words, Pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ concerning you. Thus, if you want to have a relationship with God, like Job, Daniel, or Paul, you must worship God continually, which is also known as praying without ceasing. 
for more scriptures and a better understanding of how to pray without ceasing, please download the free book, The Gospel of the Kingdom, 77 Questions and Answers, from my website, drdebrabooks.com. If you read that book and obey the scriptures therein, you will have a relationship with God like the people in the Bible had. Continual prayer is what we all need to do. Amen. Now the king was very much impressed by the God of Daniel and he made a new decree. Then King Darius wrote unto all people, nations, and languages that dwell in all the earth, Peace be multiplied unto you. I make a decree that in every dominion of my kingdom men tremble and fear before the God of Daniel, for he is the living God and steadfast forever, and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed, and his dominion shall be even unto the end. And he had even more to say. He delivereth and rescueth, and he worketh signs and wonders in heaven and in earth. Who hath delivered Daniel from the power of the lions? So this Daniel prospered in the reign of Darius and in the reign of Cyrus the Persian. Amen. That's the story of Darius the Mede the only white man to rule over civilized people during the Old Testament. Amen. Thank you for listening. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. There, that's, that's better, isn't it? Or follow me on my Facebook page so you won't miss a single video. Please like, share, and make comments on these videos, especially if you learn something about the scriptures. Now, for any of my four free books titled, let's see, How to Read the Bible, only 19 pages, The Gospel of the Kingdom, and this, uh, as I mentioned, it teaches you how and why to pray without ceasing while simultaneously describing the gospel of the kingdom. And it's a catechism, and it is based on the scriptures, which are in blue. Also, time out for the reprobate saint, which describes the different type of people that are in the church. The scriptures are in red. And we see excellent artwork by the late Eric Dinkins and Ariel Echevarria. And my most recent book, The Black Sons of Abraham. This is 235 pages, but it does have pictures. And this wonderful artwork is by Darian Greer. So you can download these from my website, which, as I have mentioned, is, uh, let's see, www.drdebrabooks.com. Maybe you'll join me next Saturday at 7 p.m. in the Eastern Time Zone when I plan to share a brief summary of the white men in the Bible whom I have not yet discussed. And these are the men whose names are highlighted in red here. I haven't mentioned them yet, but I plan to do that next week. After that, I plan to discuss a topic titled, Why Racism is the Catholic Church's Attempt to Prove God Wrong. Three weeks from today, I intend to begin a new series titled, Why White People Who Are Not Christians Are the Heathens of the Old Testament, I'm sorry, of the New Testament, to be followed by a series titled King David and the Brothers, Lord Willing. Blessings in Jesus' sweet name.